So in this video, we're going to take a look at the Mermaid Live Editor and also how it works with ChatGPT to create diagrams. We'll take a brief look at the Mermaid Live Editor, what it is, open source, and then the code for it in GitHub. And then we'll go into my ChatGPT Plus and show it working and how I generated some flow charts and different diagrams using the tool. So thanks for stopping by to check out the video and let's go ahead and get started. So if we go back to the edit diagram page, this is the mermaid live editor, which is just run in a web browser. And this is the chat GPT plus where I used a plugin to generate the diagram. But if we take a step back for just a second here and look at what is the Mermaid Live Editor, it's a flowchart and diagrams editor. Use Mermaid Live Editor to create, preview, edit, share flowcharts, sequence diagrams, or Gantt diagrams. The charting tool uses markdown inspired text definitions and a renderer to create and modify complex diagrams. Is it open source? As it says here, yes, Mermaid is free and its code is open source and it's based on a core set of open source components, which are themselves based on open source, open and standardized languages and platforms like Python, R, Debian, Nginx, and others. So that's where it came from and what it is. I do a whole lot of flow charting and I like looking at newer tools to help out. And now ChatGPT Plus has plugins to do this. And so we'll have this window where I already ran the commands and then we'll also have a new window where we'll start from scratch and run the same commands and see what the results look like. So first of all, as you can see here on the screen, I do have the ChatGPT Plus which does cost money. It's a monthly fee of like $20 a month. And so I'll go ahead and click on chat GPT four. And then once I'm in there, I'll click on the plugins. And here you can see some different plugins that I've loaded. And in order to see those, you click on the plugin store. So we'll go ahead and go there for just a second. So now that screen is loaded and if we search, let's say for diagram, you can see the diagram tools or plugins that are available. So I chose the show me diagrams and that's the one we'll be looking at, but there are other ones. And in the next video, I'll also be talking about other plugins such as PDF and chatting with your PDF. So we'll be looking at the AI PDF and also the summarize anything to see how they work with different PDF files that I will throw at it. So let's get out of this screen and go back since I've already selected them. And here I just have the show me diagrams selected as my plugin. So let's go back and look. And we'll go ahead and try and run this one first. And so I asked it, show me a class diagram for interfacing with the Firebase database using JavaScript. So let's go ahead and put that in here on a new prompt and hit enter. And so now you can see it invoked the used show me diagrams and now it's processing it. It does sometimes take a little bit to do this. So let's compare that to the first time when I ran it.
and it does look a little bit different to me. However, let's scroll back a little bit further here and see when I asked it this question here, explore diagrams, because it tells us here to go ahead and ask it about other diagrams. It says to view other types of diagrams and languages, use the key phrase, explore diagrams. So in the results of asking it that, it tells us here, class diagrams are the main building block of object-oriented modeling. They're used to show the classes of a system, their interrelationships, and the operations and attributes of each class. And then they show some examples, a graph diagram in Mermaid, a graph diagram in D2, and a graph diagram in, I'm not sure how to say that one. So I've scrolled back to the top of my original chat GPT and let's go ahead and ask it the same questions and see what it says. Show me a flow chart of how to call the SharePoint REST API to get a list of documents. So let's go ahead and submit that prompt and see what it tells us. All right, so they're showing a process to follow in order to call a SharePoint REST API. And SharePoint is a content management system amongst many other things. So here's the first tab where I asked it initially and it does look like it gave the same answer. And then I typed explore diagram. So let's go ahead and do that in the second window and see what it tells us. So there it's explaining different information about different types of diagrams different types of diagrams and what they mean. So as you can see, it does take it a little bit to generate all that information. And notice here we have a little right arrow. So if I click on that, you can see it explains or shows other types of diagrams. Graph is mermaid plat platinum. D2 for a sequence diagram. And any relationship diagrams. So it's pretty pretty neat how it shows all those different examples. So let's go back to the first tab again and see what I asked it next. So then I told it, show me the entity relationship for the Microsoft Northwinds database. So let's go ahead and ask it that. And let's go ahead and submit that. And it's invoked the show me diagrams. And now it's running. So it looks like it timed out. We'll try it again in just a minute. So we're trying again. Let's see if it finishes this time. Okay, it looks like not, but we'll take a look at the other tab to see what it did. So here is an entity relationship diagram that it drew for the Microsoft Northwinds database, which is like a sample database that Microsoft uses in many different like demos and prototypes. 
So you can see how it's relating customers and orders, orders and line items, products and line items, suppliers to products, and products to categories. So I think that's really cool how it can do that. So this is the last one. I will ask it and then we'll take a look at the mermaid version of this information and how that works. So there's the results and then notice there's a link here that says you can view this diagram in a new tab. So let's go ahead and click on that and you can see that information in a new tab or we can edit this diagram online if you want to make any changes. So let's go ahead and click on that and here you can see how it pulls up the information inside of the mermaid live editor so on the left side here we can use their markdown language to it's kind of like writing code to describe what type of a diagram and what pieces you want connected and so forth so we're going to go ahead and copy that code and then we're going to go back into chat gpt and we're going to ask it to draw a diagram based on that information so it's like the reverse of what we just did so here i'm going to ask it show me a mermaid diagram using this code and let's go ahead and put the code in there and then click enter all right so it looks like i reached a limit for the moment so we'll go look at the other tab and see what it did so here's where I asked it show me this code in mermaid and then down here you can see here's your code represented as a mermaid class diagram as it was drawn inside a chat GPT so it's like you can do it either way you could write the code first and then tell ChatGPT to draw it for you, or you can ask ChatGPT to draw the diagram and then go look at it in the Mermaid editor. So I think that's really nice and, and pretty powerful to be able to do that either way. And here we can look at other sample diagrams real quick, like you can see sequence diagrams and the code of how that's done. flow charts you can see the syntax there of how to create a flow chart class diagrams like we looked at in one of our examples state diagrams mind maps I like using those for just coming up with ideas and it's a handy way to do that and you can see here it's written in a format that's fairly English like and then if we come down to the actions here we can see we could copy the image to the clipboard and then paste it into another document or paste it into an email or whatever or you can export to PNG SVG and you can specify an automatic size or width and a height. And it looks like they also have an option here for you to copy your markdown. And the pan and zoom, I had enabled that so I can zoom in and out of it or just drag it around. If it's a fairly large diagram, it's pretty handy. You can also change the theme, which is nice if you want to see it in dark mode. or back to light mode. 
So here I'll take a look at their warning message that I reached a usage cap and what does it say? So they're explaining it here. I don't know what this means. I haven't seen this screen before, but looks like they're exploring ways for chat GPT plus subscribers to use it in a less constrained manner, maybe in the form of a new subscription level or higher level GPT for usage or something else. So I will fill this out and find out what they say. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I like drawing flow charts and I think it's really interesting how you can write code like we looked at here and go back and forth between an editor like Mermaid, write your code in there and or have it generated inside from the chat GPT plugins. Well, thank you for watching the video and if you want to stick around, I'll be uploading another video pretty soon about other chat GPT plugins. Have a great day. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content.